Hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to make a custom wooden thin blue line flag. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to cut 13 of these guys at 37 inches. These are just uh, one by twos from Home Depot. They are eight foot strips. If you want to rip something down to this size, they are three quarter inches deep by an inch and a half wide this way so but first we're just gonna cut 13 of those at 37 inches all right so now we got all of our uh, 37 inch pieces cut and then I got a couple of these cutoffs right here so we're gonna use four of these and then we're gonna cut them at 18 inches and then we're gonna be using those for uh, backers to uh, glue and nail on the back side of the flag and then when you cut these you'll also have a couple scraps and um, usually like a three or four inch scrap will work if you have two of them and then those um, you'll see later on you can use to uh, put your hangers on depending on how you want to hang it but um, that's is that's just optional if you want to but you'll see later on where you'd use it um, but just gotta cut these four at 18 inches All right, so we got all of our wood cut. I just got these two small pieces. Those will be for my hangers. Those are just at five inches. I got our four 18 inch backer pieces and then I got 13 of our stripes. I actually have one extra. Um, that's just in case I burn one and I don't really like how it turns out. You can always flip it around and use the other side, but um, I just like to have an extra just in case. So I got uh, 14 stripes here at 37 inches. Now the next thing is we're going to, uh, I just like to sand them before I burn them just to make sure that there's no rough spots and then they kind of burn uh, evenly. You don't have to if you don't want to, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and sand these down with just like some 220 grit fine sandpaper. And then after that, we will be ready to burn them. All right, now we're all done sanding. So next thing we can do is just go ahead and start the burning process. So uh, let me just show you what that looks like. All right, so for burning these things, uh, you just wanna start slowly and just move move slowly back and forth and just try and get a feel for um, how quick it's gonna burn. But uh, usually I'll just go slowly over it. And even if it doesn't burn anything, the first time you pass over, just just keep moving and then the second time you come over just it's all about trying to keep it steady so that it's um, nice and even and uh, let me just show you what it looks like All right, so that's kind of the look that I go for. It's really just a personal preference of what you want. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the rest of mine burn and we'll go on to the next step. All right, now that we got them all burned, uh, now you can go ahead and try and arrange them. And uh, if, you're in, if you're particular about what grain you want to be on the white stripes, cause the black ones are gonna be stained, so you won't see much of the grain. So I will probably, I'll probably make these three black stripes because uh, I like this grain a lot better than that grain. And then maybe I'll make like this one a black one, maybe I'll make this one a black one. So you can just kind of order it in whatever way you want to. And then once you got them all ordered, then we'll be ready to stain. All right, so I got them arranged the way I want them. So the next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and start staining. For stain, I will be using, uh, this is Varathane water-based wood stain, and it's uh, tintable, so you just get it from like Home Depot or Lowe's. And uh, for the black, I will be using Midnight. And for the blue, I will be using Navy Blue. And uh, to stain, I just use a rag. Uh, you could use a stain brush, you could use a foam brush, uh, just kind of whatever you want to use. But I'll just be using a rag, and then I go through and I do two coats. So for starting at the top, you'll just do every other stripe black. And uh, if you're worried about dripping, it might just make sense to just pull all the black ones aside to stain them just so you don't get it on any of the white ones. And then 
on all these inside edges i'll just barely wipe it just right on the inside of that crease so that uh when you go ahead and clamp it all together in case any of them don't line up perfect there's not just like a random just white line you know it's highly unlikely that anybody would notice or it would ever be a problem but i just do that just in case it's bumped up a little bit there's not like a white line when it's supposed to be a black stripe so we're gonna go ahead and stain those and then uh you'll just be staining the one six up from the bottom will be the blue one so uh, if you want, I kind of put this one right here for the blue one. It's got kind of a cool grain, so I'm hoping that it will show through and that it will look pretty cool. And then um, I will show you how to do the union, because uh, you will need to stain three of them, just the left half for the union black. So I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so first of all, make sure the stain is uh, mixed well enough. And then you just want to take your... Um, I'll just show you how to do a rag, just since that's what I use. So. I'll just take a little end of the rag, just like this, I'll just fold it a couple times. I'll just dip it, and then we'll just start on this bottom one here. So on the bottom one, I'm not gonna stain that bottom edge at all, I just want it on the face, and then I just want it on this inside, right here, or right here. So, so I'll just uh, dip it, and then just lightly, um, you know, dab it on the edge, just to make sure that it's not gonna drip everywhere. And then I just wanna, it'll start out pretty thick, you just want to kind of go back and forth and then you want to go back over what you already went over just to make sure it's not super thick on one end and then super light on the other end but you just want to go try to get it as even as you can and then when it starts to feel a little bit dry you just got to dip it again but then you also want to get this edge right here because that will be on the inside and for those I'll usually just you know just right along the edge you don't need to do the whole side so I'll do it like that and then just dip it. And then I'll be doing two coats. So I'll just go over, do one, one good coat on everything, let it all dry, and then I'll go over and do a second coat. And then that will give it a nice black look. If you like, if you just like how it looks with only one coat on it, then that's just fine. So whatever you like, and then that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna go through, stain every other black one. And then um, I'll show you, when I'm done with that, I'll show you how to do the uh, three that just need part of it stained. All right, so to do the top three white stripes, all you're gonna do is just take the stripe and then you're gonna take some uh, utility blades you need three of them, or you could do one at a time, but uh, if you have three of them, it'll let you do them all at the same time. So you're just gonna take your razor blade, and then you're gonna measure uh, 14 and three quarter inches over, Then you just wanna make a tiny little mark, and then you just wanna take a speed square, and then you wanna line it up right on that mark, and then you're gonna take a razor blade, just gonna run it right alongside of the speed square. Let me do it this way, just so you can see what I'm doing a little better. So, I have my tiny little mark right here. So I'm just gonna line this up with it. And then I'm gonna take my razor blade and then I'm gonna set it right, right alongside this so that it's run straight up and down. And then hold it on either end. And you just wanna tap. Just tap it in just like that. And then you just wanna make sure that on either side, see right there you can you can see that it's, um, get this thing to focus real quick here. So you can see right there that it bit good on this side, but on this other side, it didn't bite in all the way. See how it's not in very far? So I'm just gonna tap in that side just a little bit more. So you're gonna do that to your, uh, the, the top three white stripes. But you just wanna do that to your top three white stripes and then that will allow you to just use your stain rag or brush or whatever and you can just go right up against this and uh, nothing will bleed through and it'll be a nice, a really nice clean line. Now that we got all of our black stained, we can go ahead and stain our blue. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and show you what these, what it looks like when you pull one of these razor blades off. 
So as you can see, it's a very nice clean line. But uh, next we're just gonna go ahead and stain our blue one. I'll just do two coats of blue on there and uh, we'll be ready to nail it all together. All right, so I got everything stained up. Uh, I ended up doing three coats on this blue one. Uh, that was just the, the tint that I was the happiest with, but it's all a personal preference. Um, the next thing we're, that we're gonna do is just nail it all together. So I'm just gonna get it uh, up onto the table here and I'm just gonna put some, I'm just gonna put a couple pieces of wood down below it just so that it's not sitting flat on the table just because I don't, I don't know if I trust how clean this table is. So I'll just put a couple pieces down, uh, maybe the pieces that I have under it right now. Otherwise, uh, I got a couple cutoffs over here. And I'll just set these down, and then we're just gonna move the whole thing up here. And uh, if it's easier to move it up here face up, and then flip it over, or you can just move it up here and flip it over as you go, but when we get it up here, we do want it um, all to be just like completely flipped over backwards. So uh, whatever's easier for you, I'll just bring it over right side up and then flip it just so that we don't mess it up. But we can just go ahead and set it all up on here. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is just on the bottom stripe and the top stripe from each, uh, from both sides, you're gonna wanna measure over an inch and a half and make a mark and 14 inches. And then you got it on the top here and then also on both sides. And then this is just gonna help us once we got it all glued and we got it all clamped together. This will just help us when we put our uh, strips on the back. We can just line it up on the top, line it up on the bottom, and then we know that we are, uh, we know that they're evenly spaced apart. So, and then uh, also when you clamp these together, it's a good idea to just hold, um, because we're gonna glue it all, and then and then once we start to clamp it, it might almost wanna try and buckle up on you. So if you just hold one hand down on one of these strips while you tighten it, that would help. And then you can also, just like right before you clamp it, just make sure that this is all, just hold one of these up against this edge just to make sure that they're all lined up with one another. But uh, before we do that, we gotta go ahead and we're just gonna turn all these things right side up like this, and then we're just gonna run a bead of glue down. Uh, I like to glue in between each of the stripes, and then I also like to glue these on the back. Um, I've heard people say that you could either do one or the other and you don't need to do both, but um, I do both just to be safe. So we're just gonna flip all these up, and then we are going to just run glue down between each one, and then we're gonna just wipe it, or just run your finger along, along it just to spread it out. So we're gonna do that between each one, then we're gonna flip them all down, and then um, you'll need clamps that are at, at least 19 inches, and then that will allow you to just clamp all the way from the top to the bottom, and uh, clamp it tight together. I'm using an 18 gauge brad nailer, and my nails that I use are inch and a quarter nails, and those will not come through the face. As long as you don't have your pressure set too high, then you should be fine. If you don't have nails, uh, you could try and just glue the whole thing and then just leave your clamps on. Um, but I do move, I'll set my first clamp right here, then I'll set my second one right here, and then after I nail on this strip, I'll just leapfrog my clamps over, and then I'll leapfrog this one over as I nail them on. So if you don't have a nailer, uh, you could just try and put a clamp on each end and just hope that there's not too much gap in the middle. But you're gonna be best off if you got something to nail it, even a stapler, just anything that will go through the wood into the back and uh, hold it from moving around. You could even clamp it, and you could run one on the back, and then you could just screw uh, this board into the top and the bottom one just to hold everything together. And then you could just do that if you got uh, a drill and you don't have a nailer. But um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my nailer since I got it here. And uh, let me just show you how it looks. And I try and glue it towards the back so that there's less likely of a chance when we clamp them together that the glue is gonna spread out the front. Just so that you don't have to clean a bunch of excess glue off of the front of it. And then like I said, you just wanna take a block and just line them all up and make sure that they're all um, 
Make sure that they're all straight together. I'm actually gonna move this block right so that it's lined up with our lines. So then we can push down when we nail this. So we're gonna make sure that they're all straight. And then let's go ahead and uh, also when I clamp it, I like to put um, a block on the top and the bottom just to protect the wood when I clamp it. I just don't want it to get uh, damaged or bent by the clamp. So I'm actually gonna put one right here first because I think that kind of helps it from uh, tweaking on this side. We don't need to clamp it super hard. We just need to get it so that they're all, you know, fairly tight together. And then I'm actually just gonna put my bead of glue down on this one. When I glue the back, I'll just line this up just right on the other side of these two marks. And then I can just run, run my glue right there. And then I'll run it right on the back as well. And like I said, um, I don't know if this is necessary, but I just, I just like to have it just to feel like it might be a little bit stronger. And then we're just gonna line this up on the top and the bottom. Make sure you have your nail gun ready. And then we're just gonna push down, get our clamp in the right spot. All right, and then you just wanna clamp it as tight as you can so that all the boards are uh, pretty tight together. And then just go ahead and Go ahead and tack this guy in there. I do two, uh, two nails per stripe. All right, and then we're gonna pull this one off and then we'll just leapfrog it and then we'll do the other two stripes as well. And uh, you're gonna be putting your board on the inside of both of the lines. So on the 14 inch, it'll be on the inside of the line. So uh, everything will be um, towards the center from the line. All right, so the next thing that we gotta do is just get your uh, your picture of whatever badge you wanna carve into it printed out, or uh, pretty much anything that you wanna carve into it. You could even do this with names or badge numbers or whatever you wanna do it with. And if you want it to be printed out onto more than one piece of paper, uh, I can show you real quick how to do that. Uh, you're just gonna need to go on your computer and you're gonna need to open Paint. Uh, most uh, Microsoft computers should have it as like just like a desktop app. And you just need to open your picture in Paint, and then you need to go under File, and you need to go under Print, and then go under Print Preview. And then once you're in Print Preview, you gotta go up in the le upper left-hand corner and go under Page Setup. And then right here, you can change the Adjust To Size or the Fit To Size. And then that will adjust the size of your picture onto multiple pages. Right there, it will give you a preview of what it's gonna print out as, and then you just gotta hit print, and then that will print it uh, onto more than one page if you want it to be uh, just bigger than just one page. So I got this one printed out onto, it goes just onto two pages, but I think it'll work good for how I want it. So uh, the first thing that we gotta do is, if you did print it onto more than one page, we just gotta cut the excess that's right here off of just one of these pages. So I'll just cut it off of this page. And we just wanna cut that off so that we can tape our pictures together, lined up how they're supposed to be. And the easiest way that I found to uh, get rid of this is to just um, take just some sort of straight edge, just line it up right with that edge, and then if you have an, uh, a razor blade with uh, preferably a, a newer tip that will cut it nice and clean, then you can just run it right along that straight edge. That will give you a nice clean cut. And then that will allow us to go ahead and just tape it together and then just make one large picture just like that. So I'm gonna grab my tape, line it up as best I can. And then I'm just gonna tape it. Um, since I'm only carving the badge part, I can tape onto this black area. Then we want to tape the other side. Now that we got it all taped together as one piece, we just want to figure out where we want to position it. And you could position it right at the center of the union. Uh, I've done that with a couple different flags where um, I'll just put different things 
inside the middle of the union. I can uh, show you a couple just so you can get an idea of what that looks like. But I'm going to put mine somewhere on this right side. Um, maybe I'll do it right in here and I'll do it just so that this Phoenix right here is just runs right through this blue stripe. And then I just want to make sure that it's fairly straight up and down. So I'll just use my uh, speed square. All right, so I think I like it right about there. Sorry guys, I was having a little bit more camera issues. Um, but the only part that I missed is that you just need to tape your piece of paper where you want your carving to be and try and avoid taping to the face of the flag because it might peel up on the wood. So um, if you have to, you can tape pieces of paper to the paper with your image on it. And if you have to tape those to the edge of the flag, then that will make sure that none of the wood peels up. And um, this is just to keep it in place for when we carve it. All right, so the tool that I'll be using to carve this out with is a Dremel 3000. And then I have a flex shaft attached to it. And then at the end here, I just got a little dust blower. Uh, you don't need the dust blower, but it does help to keep your carving space clean. And then for this one, since all the edges are like fairly big, there's no like fine details, I'll be using a size 106 carving tip. So that'll be this one right here. If it had a lot of fine detail, you could use the size 105. Uh, right up in here and then that will that one's a little bit smaller than this one and that will allow you to get a little bit of a cleaner carve on it if you want to order any of these wood carving tips or the dremel tool i can link that down below so what we're going to do is we're just going to go through and just outline starting from the middle of your picture you're going to carve through the paper and then you're just going to slightly carve onto the wood and then um that will allow you to get a rough outline for everything. And then after we're gonna pull it off, and then once we have our outline, we can go through and do a, a better carve on it. But first we just wanna go through and just lightly carve through, and then this will just give us our outline. And you wanna start in the middle just so that uh, if you just carve around this whole edge around here, then this whole piece of paper in the middle will just be loose and uh, you won't get very far. So. Uh, let me just show you what it looks like and then we can just go ahead and carve out the whole thing. And uh, when I do this, I turn the Dremel speed on, on high and then I just lightly go back and forth and I just carve through the paper onto the wood. So let me show you what it looks like. So as you can see, I just barely carved through the paper and then I just lightly carve onto the wood. And then underneath there, that's on a blue stripe. So as you can see, it's just clean wood right there. So if we just go around and do that to all of our edges. When we pull it up, we're just gonna have a nice big outline of this. And uh, then we can go through and do a more detailed carve on it. I'm also gonna add some stain on the edges of just these uh, white boards, just right around the border, just to give it, just to make it pop out a little bit more. But uh, I'll show you that when we get there. But for now, we're just gonna go through and just trace the whole badge, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I just finished doing my uh, my initial outline. So let's go ahead and pull this paper off and uh, we can see how it looks. All right, so as you can see, we got a nice clean outline on there and it's just barely carved into the wood. So now uh, the next thing that we can do is just, uh, we can go ahead and just lightly stain over these white stripes so that we can go through and then when we clean all this wood up we can just lightly stain over this just stain some black over this and then when we go through and clean it up it'll really make all these edges pop all right so let's go ahead and stain the uh these white stripes right here i'm gonna see if i can do it with a rag just since that's what i've been using but a brush or um, a foam brush or anything else should work just fine as well. 
So I'm just gonna dip it. And then I'm just gonna like, kind of brush it off on the edge just so that it's not super thick. Let's see. And then you just kind of, you can try and make it straight lines if you want it. I just kind of want mine to have like a, just like a brushed edge, kind of like that look on it. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Using a brush on this might actually work better than a rag, but I'm just gonna use a rag just since that's what I started out using. So, I mean, it covered up a little bit of the lines, but that's fine because we're going to go through and clean all these lines up and carve them out better, so. Uh, let's see, no, let's try it right up in here. All right, and then for this one, um, you can also just do as many coats as you want if you want it to be darker or if you're not too worried about how dark it is. Um, it's really up to you. Alright, so maybe something like that. Because once that's all, I'll probably add one more coat on there just to make it a little bit darker. But once that's out, once that's all carved in, that'll like pop out a lot more than if it was just these uh, white stripes continuing all the way through. But uh, maybe I'll let that dry a little bit. Actually, it's probably dry already. You know, I'll just go ahead and just add one more coat on there just so that it. Uh, matches with the other black stripes and then I think that'll look really good. What it looks like now we can just go ahead and let that dry and then we can go ahead and give this a nice clean carve I'm gonna go through and carve out uh, this line all the way so that it's just a solid white line uh, this inner line will also be a solid white line I'm gonna carve out the entire inside of the Phoenix here of the bird and uh, then it will really pop with this added stain so all right, now that the stain is all dry uh, I'm gonna go through and start carving out all the insides uh, for most of it I think I'll be able to get away with using the uh, 107 right here, and that will be the biggest wood carving tip. Let me show you what it looks like. So, like I said, so right now I got the 106, and the 107 uh, looks like that. So if it if it looks like it will work for whatever you're carving, let me just show you. As you can see, the tip is smaller than, than the insides of what I'm gonna be carving, so it'll work just fine for most of it, but for instance, in these letters, I don't know if I wanna be using it because it might be really easy to make a mistake with that, but for most of it, I'll be able to use this, so you just gotta kinda look at whatever you're carving and see what will work. But um, right now, we're just gonna go ahead and get all of this inside carved out, and then we can move on to the stars.
All right, as you can see, we got the metal all nicely cleaned up. There's a little bit of this fuzz down here from the carving. So I'm just gonna quickly throw on uh, this little sanding tip right here. And then I'm just gonna run it over that and hopefully that will clean some of that up. And then when we're done with that, we can go ahead and move on to our stars. All right, uh, I just went over it with the sander a couple times and um, I could do it a little more, but it got most of those uh, those little wood fuzzies that were on there, you know. <laughs> Makes it look a lot cleaner. All right, so for the union, uh, I'll be using a stencil to trace all the stars into the union first, and then I'll go through after and then uh, carve the outline. But first, uh, I'll link this down below if you wanna order one off Amazon. Uh, they're only like 10 bucks, and this one has lasted me a while, so they, they should last you a while. You just wanna tape it to this uh, left side. And then you, you just want to even out the space between um, this gap here on the top and then the overhang on the bottom under the blue stripe. So you just want to kind of center it on there and then you can just tape it and then tape the top edge as well. And then we can go ahead and just using a pencil. If you want to get your stars as clean as possible, try get uh, try make sure that your tip is as sharp as possible and it doesn't get too dull. Otherwise, it'll start to not trace as good. But you just want to go through and then we just want to trace them all and then we'll pull that off and then we can go ahead and start carving them. So I just finished uh, tracing them. I just put one piece of tape on the left side and then I just put three just in the middle right here. Uh, I didn't put them on the black because I didn't want it to pull off the stain. And as long, I, I wouldn't use like white tape for this. Try to use something that's not quite as sticky so it lessens your chance of peeling any wood off. So as you can see, I just got them all lightly traced onto here. And now I'm just gonna take my Dremel tool. I'll use my, uh, my finest tip, which is the uh, 105, and I'll use that one to do my outlines, just because it's the smallest, and then it will let me get the cleanest um, points on all my stars. And then when I'm done with that, I'll go down and use the 106, which is the medium one, and I'll use that to clean out all the middles. And I think the easiest way to carve these uh, that I found is to just just rest your uh, the side of your hand down, and um, and then just just slowly go back and forth. And then you could just go straight through and follow to that line and then that might help you get uh, straighter lines. Uh, let me just show you real quick. So something like that. And then once the middle is all cleaned up, then that will turn out really nice. And if you don't have the finer tip, you don't have to use it. Uh, the first couple flags that I did, I didn't use the finer tip and they turned out fine. But, um, but if you do have it, uh, it could help you get just a little bit cleaner stars. So I just finished uh, carving out the middle of the stars. Um, I might go through with the sander and sand a little bit of these off. Otherwise, uh, I might just lightly torch over them and then that will usually just like burn them off. Uh, you wanna be careful doing that just so you don't burn them too dark, but um, 
But the next thing that we're gonna do is just, um, I like to just sand these edges down so that it's all nice and smooth um, on both sides just in case they didn't line up perfectly. And then um, I just like to do a light torch just around all the edges. And then uh, we can go ahead and put the hangers on the back. And then I'm gonna do a light torch over the stars. I think I'm just gonna leave this clean and white. I think I like how that looks. But if that is something you'd wanna do is torch that and give it a, a burned look or not have it be so white, you could, you could easily do that. Uh, it's all just based on whatever you want. Uh, brushing over these will also help a lot of them fall out or even just rubbing over it with your with your hands you'll see a lot of these little little wood shavings just fall out and usually that'll help get rid of a lot of them just because they're barely hanging on just from um, from when it was carved so I think I'll get by without some without sanding mine but if it is something that's bugging you you can easily just throw on a a sanding bit and get those nice and smooth. All right, so for the hangers, uh, I just use these little sawtooth hangers and um, I just screw them roughly. I actually just hold a speed square. Uh, first I'll make a mark down this way at seven eighths and then I'll just hold it along this edge right here and then I'll put it at uh, two and a half. So I'll put this one right in there and then the other one I'll just screw it in so that it's just flat along the bottom of that, and then I'll just do that on both sides, and then we'll be ready to go ahead and spray it. And if you have like the wire hangers, I mean, you can just screw in on either side, or uh, the hangers that just have the little ring on them, uh, you could just screw those on either side or just wherever, whatever you want. But uh, they, I know they sell these at Walmart in just like a three pack for like a dollar. So uh, this is just what I like to use, but you can use any uh, picture style hanger that you want to. So now all that's left to do is spray it. Uh, I like to use this stuff. It's Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel. And I like to do uh, three light even coats over the whole thing just to give it some nice solid protection. everyone that is the finished product right there please let me know if you guys have any questions down below and i'd be happy to answer them uh, i linked everything that i used down below in the description in case you want to order anything thank you so much for watching and good luck with your flags